All right, well, welcome back to the channel, guys and gals. Today's video is going to be on total cost for 100,000 miles on my 1999 Ford F-350 with 7.3 diesel in it. Two-wheel drive truck that I use for hot shotting. Um, with this truck, pulls the trailer constantly, all the time. Uh, you know, 75% of its life has had a load on it. There is deadhead involved, but we can go with 75% of its life. It's had a, you know, with me anyway, as far as 100,000 miles, that it's had a load on it. Um, this truck has 330 some thousand miles on it now. I started out with this truck with 230 some thousand miles on it um, when I purchased it. So let's get into the purchase cost, the maintenance cost, and then the unexpected cost of what it's cost me to run this truck over 100,000 miles. As far as the unexpected, we're going to talk about the breakdowns, uh, mishaps, parts that had to be replaced, whatever, and go from there. Uh, we're basically going all the way down to the windshield wipers. So, I've already made a video as far as the truck purchase and what it cost as far as maintenance to run this truck for 100,000 miles. So I'm going to take those numbers and put them up here. Um, I purchased the truck for $7,000 to get it back up to par to where it will pass DOT inspection and get me from point A to point B in a timely manner and in a safe and productive manner. It cost me $3,000 to bring it up to that point. So we are in this truck at $10,000 just to put it on the road. Okay. That's the magic number right there. $10,000 is what this truck cost me to start running up and down the road. Uh, within that $3,000 uh, extra that I put into that truck, we done turbo, turbo pedestal, uh, all four rear tires on the truck. It is a dually. Uh, all four rear tires of the truck. Um, we done front and rear brakes, front and rear rotors, front and rear bearings, inners and outers, uh, front and rear calipers, um, fluid changes. This is what we done to bring it up to that point of $10,000 and start from there to go for 100,000 miles. So as far as the maintenance cost for 100,000 miles, this involves all your fluid changes, okay, for 100,000 miles. Um, it, go, it involves my one tire change, uh, complete tire change, um, and I think two extra front tires, if I recall, uh, for 100,000 miles in this maintenance cost. Uh, at that point, we are at, I gotta find it here, maintenance cost, uh, $2,649, okay, for 100,000 miles. So $2,649, miles, that's what it costs to do the maintenance. That's your oils, that's, that's your filters, that's tires that's what it should cost you with any other hiccups without having any kind of other hiccups uh for a hundred thousand dollars worth of maintenance is if you do it yourself this is yourself doing the work okay um i don't use anybody to do my work i do it all myself so this is there's no labor involved in any of these prices so just to start out 100,000 miles, $10,000 invested in the truck to get it on the road. We are at $2,649 in the maintenance cost for that 100,000 miles, which puts us at a grand total right now at $12,649, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Now, let's talk about the unexpected because the unexpected do happen. It uh, doesn't matter what you're driving, whether it's a brand new truck or a 22 year old truck like what I'm running. Uh, it happens, I can tell you firsthand that it happens because I've been down that road and let me tell you, I would rather be in this old truck than a brand new truck doing this work. And there's a couple reasons behind that. One, parts availability. Two, I don't need a computer to work on this truck versus a brand new truck. Three, I can work on this truck no problem versus these new trucks. You need that computer to work on, okay? Uh, there's a lot of variables of what's going on between old school, which is what I'm running, versus the new trucks, new school, and uh, a lot of things that I don't know on the new trucks. 
these old trucks, I grew up with these trucks. I know how to work on these trucks. So, and they're simple, real simple to work on. Let's get into it as far as the unexpected. Okay. First unexpected uh, happened to me right here, four and a half miles down the road at the gas station. Pulled in, didn't sound very good. Uh, I was getting ready to head out on a run. Truck didn't sound very good, and I was trying to figure out what the heck the noise was, and uh, ended up uh, um, checking it out, and it turned out that the water pump was bad. Uh, the bearing in the water pump went out. Typical thing, it's normal wear and tear item, I guess. It happens. So we done a water pump. Uh, I replaced upper and lower hoses at that time, along with the serpentine belt. Uh, new antifreeze, which was five gallons per, you know, five gallons of antifreeze. Uh, brand new thermostat, gasket, and housing. And that grand total was 450 bucks. So I'm gonna put uh, WP for water pump, okay? Water pump, $450 is what it costs for me to do that right here. I just drove the truck home, went in town, got the parts, come back, put it together. All right, so that was that. Now, could I have gotten away with just doing a water pump and maybe a thermostat? Absolutely, probably could have, but out here doing the hot shot uh, trucking, what I do, you know, you get into remote locations, you're pushing the trucks to the extreme all the time, and uh, or 90% of the time, you're pushing the trucks to the extreme, uh, doing the unthinkable with these trucks constantly, day in, day out. If I'm tearing into something, I'm gonna go ahead and replace it. That way I know it's new. Uh, that's why I did the serpentine belt because you have to remove the top radiator hose on this particular truck uh, to put that belt on. So I went ahead and did it. Uh, same way with the uh, upper and lower radiator hoses. I don't know how old they were. Truck's got 230 some thousand miles on it or you know when I bought it. So we'll just go ahead and replace them. All right, the second thing. Okay, this happened down in Paducah, Kentucky. I uh, went down there, spent the night, was going to offload the next morning, and uh, two things happened. It was just like, you know, when it rains, it pours kind of thing. Um, two things happened at the same time. So it's hot and muggy, dead middle of summer, hot and muggy, and um, my blower motor quit working, so I had no AC in the truck, and I'm spending the night at a truck stop in the truck, all right? It's cold. It, it's, it's just unbearable. I really didn't get any sleep at night. Uh, to top it all off, um, next morning, shut the truck off, went inside the truck stop, was going to get a shower because I was just nasty from the night before, just from sweat. Uh, went in the truck stop, got a shower, come back out, went to start the truck, batteries were dead on the truck. Alternator went out. So ended up uh, changing not only the blower motor, which went bad, uh, I also put two new batteries in it. The older battery, the old batteries that were in it were probably fine, but they were dead at the time. I went ahead and bought two new Duralas batteries and uh, stuck those in. I did not know how old the original batteries that were in the truck were. There was no stamp on the battery or anything like that to tell me how old they were, so I, I didn't know. I just went ahead and replaced them along with the alternator. Went ahead and replaced the alternator as well. Um, that was a little expensive. It wasn't too bad, but it was a little expensive, unexpected bill. It was $641. So I'm going to put alternator, and that's all I'm going to put here. Alternator, okay? What did I say? $641. $641. That was that repair, okay? The second one wasn't too bad. The second one I'm gonna chalk up more of preventative maintenance and trying something. Um, I noticed a couple weeks beforehand, uh, before I did this repair, that the truck's performance going up and down the road was getting a little sluggish in the transmission. So instead of putting a brand new, or putting a reman transmission in it or whatever, I decided I wanted to try something. I didn't feel like the transmission per se was bad. I felt more of it being the torque converter, uh, as well as, uh, you know, basically the torque converter. Let's just go with that, okay? Um, transmission service was come and due, so I ordered the torque converter, got it in. I also ordered a deeper transmission pan, okay? 
Um, it was something that was going to happen regardless, whether I was putting a torque converter in it or another transmission or whatever, I wanted a deeper pan on it to hold a little extra fluid. So that between the torque converter and the pan was six, or uh, be 900 bucks. Um, the pan was $300 and the torque converter was 600 bucks. So it come out to a total of $900. So I'm going to put uh, transmission. I'll just put uh, trans pan here. Total $900. All right. So like I said, that was more of a preventative maintenance thing. I wanted to try that and uh, see if it was work. So far, it's been fine. Okay. What else do we have? This next one actually happened. I had to cancel a load on this. Uh, this happened about an hour, hour and a half away from the house. I was headed down to Cincinnati. I was almost to my pickup and uh, I was running down uh, the highway and uh, wheel bearing went out on the truck. Now, <clears throat> I typically run Timken bearings, okay? Uh, at the time when I put, you know, up here at the purchase of the truck, only thing I could find at the time was national bearings. And of course, that's what I had to put back into this, unfortunately. Um, but I don't like national bearings. I like Timken. Um, this wasn't uh, a maintenance flaw uh, by no means. There's plenty of grease. Um, you know, wasn't overworked. The bearing should have lasted, should have been fine. I've talked to several mechanics over this, master mechanics and stuff, and uh, had showed them the bearings. And each one of them had told me that it looked like it was a fluke during the heat process of the bearing because it was just, it wasn't large enough. Uh, the, the needle part of the bearing just wasn't large enough. So it looked like a fluke in, in the casting of, you know, in the making of the bearing. So I ended up doing both sides, inners and outers again on the bearings and tube of grease, lube everything up, lube the hubs back up, put everything back together along with uh, new wheel seals on the back side. And the total cost of that was 60 bucks. So I'll put bearing. Sixty bucks. Now keep in mind, I'm doing all this work myself. Uh, not doing this, you know. I, I'm not paying any labor. I'm doing all this work myself. So this is just the cost of the parts. Um, this should actually have a tow bill on here, but I lucked out, and one, you know, my buddies were actually uh, at the farm. Didn't really have anything going on that day because of the rain. <coughs> and they actually come and got me okay i bought their lunch you know I, we repaired it you know we went in town got the parts and stuff uh bought their lunch you know they won't accept none of that stuff they won't even hardly accept fuel but i snuck fuel in their truck and i got their lunch for them so uh we'll just leave that off of there anyway the next thing that we ended up doing was uh a windshield so I can't even, I think I was down in Kentucky. Running down the road, truck in front of me, kicked a rock up, cracked my windshield. Not allowed to run down the road with cracked windshield, especially, you know, if you're doing it commercially. So we ended up putting a windshield in it. So I'll just put a big old W here for a windshield. Uh, that cost me 450 bucks. 450. And they come right out here to the driveway and put it in for me. No problem. So that was $450. The next thing, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. So we're doing pretty good. The next thing was set of headlight bulbs. I ended up changing. That was another thing that we'd done up here in the truck purchase. Um, I got rid of those smoked out, you know, factory headlamps. And I ended up buying a set off of eBay. They were like 100, 125 bucks, whatever. Uh, went and bought new bulbs and put them in there as well. Um, I run the Savannah bulbs the the ultra bright ultra bright bulbs or whatever so they went out uh one went out about two months ago the other one just went out last week so there we go bulbs bulbs 
Bulbs cost 60 bucks, 30 bucks a piece. So for a two pack, it was $60. All right. Now the next thing, oh yeah, this next one is a good one. Windshield wipers, okay? Again, I put brand new windshield wipers right up here in this purchase, okay? Um, like I said, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. We'll just go down through the whole list. Uh, I ended up having to put a set of windshield wipers on it two weeks ago um, because it started raining, turned them on, and they didn't work all that great. Uh, they weren't cleaning the window, so I just put new windshield wipers on them. I'll put wipers down here. New wipers cost 60 bucks. Is that right? 60 bucks, yep. They're $30 a piece for the wipers that I run. I run the uh, Rain X uh, Latitude uh, wipers, and that's what uh, that's what I put on there. So they're expensive, but they work great. And uh, you know, for my line of work, that's what I like to use. Uh, so some of this cost may be different depending on how you use your vehicle, if it's farm use or how you decide to take care of the vehicle. But as far as DOT goes, it's got to be tip top. And this is the kind of stuff that you just go ahead and do. I'd rather spend the money here and keep running uh, in my line of work than uh, have a little bit of a leak or something and get inspected and then get red tagged and have to sit on the side of the road and pay somebody else to fix it. Uh, cost me a heck of a lot more. So that's that. Total cost uh, of purchase of the truck, maintenance, plus all the unexpected, comes out to $15,000. $264 even, okay? That's what it is. $15,652, $15,264 is what it come out to. Now, that's what it cost for 100,000 miles to run my 99 F350 with 7.3 diesel two-wheel drive truck running hot shot. That's the cost of my truck. Uh, and that's with tires, the whole nine yards. Okay, that's even with an extra set of tires put in there. That's the whole nine yards. All that was put in the maintenance side. And then this is all the unexpected. 15,264. Okay. Before I ended up doing a video as far as a new, ver or a new truck versus an old truck, up to 100,000 miles. And then you have to start paying for everything as far as everything. I'm talking about everything. Plus a payment of $1,000 a month. <clears throat> at that time I ended up you know with this old truck I said I was going to put a thousand dollars a month away okay thousand dollars a month away for each month I was running this old truck okay this old truck I've actually ran for 24 months so that's two years okay that's where we're at with this truck so with that two years I should have twenty four thousand dollars we'll just Bring it right over here. $24,000. $24,000. Okay? Now, if I was to take out $24,000 and use that money to pay myself back for the truck, the whole maintenance of that truck, what am I ahead right now after two years? Okay? Two years total right now in this account, paid myself back full and clear. And this account took care of every bit of it, plus paid for every part of that truck. How much is still left over? That's gonna be $8,736, okay? That's what should be in that account right now, okay? Roughly, 8,736 bucks. You can call that the truck fund, whatever you want to call it, savings account, maintenance account, truck fund, whatever. Uh, right now, I could probably go purchase a truck. You know, I could go purchase another truck. Um, some of you guys are probably wondering, all right, well, you know, I do have hotshot people that do watch my channel. So you guys are, you know, cussing me out for only doing 50,000 miles a year for uh, running this, um, you know, in the hotshot game. But... Uh, for some of the newcomers in the hotshot world, don't think that you're only going to do 50,000 miles a year. 
uh, by no means, uh, especially for the first couple years. You are going to do this 100,000 miles within one year to a year and a quarter at least. You're going to be putting 100,000 miles on your truck. Um, with that said, I'm a couple weeks of being into the, into the business for seven years. Um, June 1st is going to be seven years of uh, firing up my company. And, um, you know, I'm real happy to be in the position now to where I have direct customers and they pay me dearly to be here and in their back pocket uh, for when they call and I go. So that's how that works out. That also gives me the opportunity to go do my other stuff that's also in my other videos. So, like I said, old wins again, especially in this world, as far as the hot shot world, uh, the old truck wins. Um, anything and everything to that truck I can do myself. It doesn't, it, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, the only thing that I subbed out on that as far as uh, the work went on was the windshield. I don't mess with glass, so that's the deal. It was 450 bucks for a new windshield. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Am I right? Am I wrong? You know, am I looking at the logic wrong as far as, uh, you know, should I just go with a new truck or stay with the old trucks? Me personally, I already know where I'm at, staying with the old trucks, and I'm staying 26000 and under. For anyone that wants to know, I am not going into a big truck. I have no problem going into a big truck, but it's not for me, um, especially with my future plans, which you guys will be seeing that here shortly on uh, what's going to happen in the future. So I'm still going to be hot shotting. Don't worry about that. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the flip side later.